Terror, fear, incorrect information, the manipulation of the facts. That's what led to excessive lockdowns, mass unemployment, a national mental health crisis, economic ruin, the desecration of our children's education system and, of course, put millions of people on an NHS waiting list. Covid unequivocally kill people, don't get me wrong, but in my opinion, our response to it may well kill more in the long run. But we haven't learnt the lessons. At least, our NHS and health officials don't appear to have anyway. The NHS has been busy editing its monkeypox information page and making it sound a lot worse, more deadly and transmissible than what it had previously stated. It removed a paragraph which stated, it's very uncommon to get monkeypox from a person with the infection because it does not spread easily between people. It then removed another paragraph saying monkeypox is a mild illness that will get better on its own without treatment. Some patients can develop more serious symptoms, so patients with monkeypox in the UK are cared for in specialist hospitals. Oh, and of course, it wouldn't be a good old pandemic, would it, if there wasn't a little bit of self-isolation involved? Here's a paragraph. They've added, as monkeypox can spread if there is close contact, you will need to be isolated if you are diagnosed with it. And apparently, they've also included a little note that you can get monkeypox from eating undercooked meat, which will only fuel the vegan lobby, won't it? Why are we doing this? Well, in my opinion, it could be one of several things. Overcaution, fair enough, I'd rather have that maybe than the other way around. The fact that the medical community thinks that we're now all addicted to kind of fear porn, really. We have to have some bad health news to give us a little bit of fear every single day, don't we? Or could it be because they want even more money? Could it be that they want even more resources from our government and from people like you and I, the taxpayer? Could it be that there really is some kind of big agenda going on to whip up as much fear that countries sign up now to a global WHO pandemic pact? I will never, ever think it will be the right thing to do for the UK to join an international health pact. On our own, we are nimble, agile, we're able to duck and dive a bit, ultimately thrive a bit as well. Well, look at our vaccine rollout, for example regardless of whether or not you think the vaccines are actually any good. I don't want to be dictated to by a third-rate Ethiopian politician because some health authority, who is clearly, in my opinion, in China's back pocket, decided that it was the unelected leader of the world. I find it highly suspect, personally, that China has already started stockpiling monkeypox PPE, ready and waiting to sell it to the rest of the world. I find it highly suspicious that RNHS is deliberately changing its monkeypox information page to make it sound scarier than it is. I would find it entirely wrong if Britain signed up to a global health treaty that removes our autonomy. I would find it suicide to enact any policies that financially ruin us yet again. People seem to conveniently forget that one of, if not the main reason we are in financial ruin is because of our response to the COVID crisis. It will be less like monkeypox, more like where's my money pox, won't it? And yet, all the lessons we were supposed to have learnt from COVID may well now be forgotten. Whatever it is that our health advisors are trying to sell me, I'm not buying it.